Good afternoon and welcome to the Serious Security Seminar from Purdue University. Our speaker today is Greg Stevens from the Meyer Corporation. His talk today is entitled Proactive Detection of Malicious Insiders Through Information Use Patterns. Greg. Well, so thank you for inviting me out here. Uh, I'm actually going to try to talk to you about uh, two bits of research uh, that uh, MITRE has done through our internal research and development program and uh, in conjunction, in collaboration with the Institute for Information Infrastructure Protection, um, both involving uh, detecting or better understanding the insider threat. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, insider threat's an overloaded term that many people mean can th mean different things when they say it. Uh, they can mean insiders hacking, those kinds of things. Uh, one particular type of insider that we're particularly worried about are people who don't need to hack. They already have all the privileges they need on their network. They're trusted insiders who are using their legitimate privileges for illegitimate purposes. Um, and they're kind of problematic because if you think about it, uh, uh, you know, they, the access controls, you know, really don't stop them. They're already inside the, 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 per, the circle of trust, if you will, uh, that, rep that access controls represent. Uh, and furthermore, you have traditional cyber detection methods, things like uh, log auditing um, and intrusion detection. But if you think about them, those kinds of activities are looking for attempted or successful rule-breaking behavior. These people don't need to break rules. They just use their privileges to gather what they need. Um, <clears throat> there's also another type of tool. I call them focus observation tools. Some in, people call them, uh, there's things called network forensics analysis tools, uh, data loss prevention tools. Um, and those things can be turned up to monitor everything the user does uh, in terms of how they interact with information. However, they, they really produce so much information that if you're in a large organization, you really uh, cannot uh, effectively use them except for in a forensic, you know, once you figure out you've already been had, you've lost data from a, a malicious insider, uh, to go back through and figure out how bad was it. Uh, so if you think about it, you know, when you're, when you're trying to monitor from an enterprise perspective, you may be monitoring thousands or tens of thousands or even more users. So what we really wanted to build was something that could uh, address things on those scales um, uh, in, in, with a man manageable uh, level of effort for an average organization. <clears throat> so one of the, the, a couple key aspects to what we did in terms of detection uh, we felt that, you know, certainly you can potentially catch the malicious insider when they try to, you know, exfiltrate or take the data outside the organization. Uh, but that's kind of the last step in their, you know, in their plan. Once they've done that, they've accomplished their goal pretty much. Uh, much preferable to that would be to try to catch them when they actually have to gather the information that they ultimately want to take with them. Uh, so we believe that's actually a point of vulnerability because they have to get at that information first and that happens over a, a period of time and, and another thing that can help us in this approach is focusing, uh, is, uh, focusing, if we're worried about the information being stolen, focus on how users are interacting with the information. How do they browse? How do they search? What do they download? What do they print? These are all things that can uh, help you uh, at least pick up the signal of what's going on and help you, so you begin to spot what's interesting. However, when you look at how people use information, the vast majority of the, of the uh, behavior is going to be benign. Uh, so to try to differentiate the potentially malicious from benign, uh, we leverage what we think of as the home field advantage. We know things about our insiders, the people uh, in, in our organizations and we know things about the data that they interact with. When you take the context and superimpose it upon the information use behavior, our, we believe you can spot patterns of misuse. So to test these concepts, we built a system that we called ELICIT. It stands for Exploit Latent Information to Counter Insider Threats. And what I'm going to do is just give you a quick overview of the system itself and this slide, and then we'll talk through the different pieces. But the way the system processes data is shown on the bottom. You know, you go from packets to events to alerts to threats. 
Uh, when you analyze the data, you go the exact, when an analyst looks at it, they go the exact opposite. So let's uh, actually, I'll describe it from left to right uh, in this and subsequent slides, um, and then we'll talk about how we actually tested this idea uh, and the results. Uh, so we, we did uh, build a network sensor that looked at how uh, people use information. We'll talk about that in the next slide. Uh, we also collected context about uh, people and the information that they interact with. Uh, by combining those two forms of uh, data together, we built a number of detectors. Um, and these detectors, when reporting thresholds are exceeded, and we, they calculate a, sco uh, a, a score each day um, for every user that has activity, uh, they produce alerts. Uh, now, if you kind of left things w at that point, you would still, uh, if you're monitoring a large enterprise, you certainly have too many events to look at everything. And even with the alerts, you have too many alerts to look through every alert. It's, I don't know if any of you have ever looked at an output of Snort or something like that for a large network, but there's a lot of data flying at you, and it's no different in this context. Uh, you really need, an analyst to effectively make use of this really needs an ability to prioritize what they did. Uh, and to do that, we use the Bayesian inference network and to basically, based on degrees of belief, to, uh, uh, to produce a probability between 0 and 1 that, the, uh, uh, that you have a malicious insider given the behavior or the alerts that you have seen. Ultimately, that gets fed into a user interface, and when an anal analyst analyzes it, they work from threats down to alerts that produce the threat score, score down to events that produce the alerts. So let's go into some of this now. Uh, in terms of, uh, for the network sensor, uh, we actually, uh, you know, we, for the research, we captured files on a real network. We actually used MITRE's intranet. We wanted to use a real world environment. Uh, that's been a real problem in general in intrusion detection is coming up with realistic data sets. Um, so we wanted to uh, at least have some uh, background data that was real in nature um, and of a large enough scale to we could tell whether our approach had any uh, ability to kind of reduce that signal to noise ratio. So we built uh, some protocol decoders that basically uh, used at the time Ethereal, now Wireshark, to dissect and filter frames that, that, that we cared about. Uh, and then we, on top of that, had added some second stage processing that uh, was based on some object-oriented Perl modules that we had written. But basically, you take the events uh, between client and server, say, for pro protocols tied to information use, things like HTTP, FTP, SMTP, and a Microsoft Windows Server message block, which is what they, you know, Microsoft does printing, file sharing, remote pre procedure calls, all sorts of interesting things. But the information use that happens over these protocols are things that we care about. And we abstract out the bits and bytes and get to what are people using with the information. Uh, so we also, when we see signs of who the user is, because to really apply context about who users are, we can't use client IP addresses. We have to use user IDs. So when we see a, a user authenticate via one of the protocols, uh, we actually tie their user ID to that session, uh, and then we follow, you know, and we attribute the events in that session to that user ID. With web, basically you look for a successful authentication and then a session cookie, and then you follow the cookie. Um, we also uh, collect contextual information. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit what that is, but it's the type of stuff you would see in an employee directory, things that tell you th various types of things about the user periodically. Uh, and what we do next is we uh, basically find things in that context that uniquely ties to that user, and we build a lookup table that where you have the key is the uniquely identifiable piece of information, the value would be a pseudonym uh, for that user. And Basically, we would take the, net, the information use behavior and anonymize it. This we were required to do just as part of the research and getting the IRB approval uh, to do this work. Uh, after anonymization, uh, we only had about 15% of the events were tied to users. This was not nearly enough to be able to begin to see who's doing what. So we had to have a way of uh, attributing additional events to the user. So we basically developed a technique uh, 